surely this man is the Son of God. That's what I found myself saying. Me, a Roman. I've crucified many men, many criminals, thieves, rapists, murderers. They all deserved it, and I made sure they got what they deserved. Rome made sure they got what they deserved. But this man, he wasn't the same. He wasn't a criminal. I'd seen him around, and he'd never struck me as being particularly dangerous. Some people were saying he was the Messiah, the man to rescue the Jewish people and bring salvation to the whole world. <laughs> We've had plenty of messiahs and saviours through our gates here in Jerusalem. None of them last, though. They all go the same way. The problem is, none of them live forever. As soon as they're dead, their military or political movement goes with them. But he had obviously got someone's back up, else he wouldn't have ended up on our doorstep. It's a delicate balance we've got here in Israel. There's a lot of deals that go on behind closed doors to make sure peace is maintained. I reckon this guy was being used as some sort of scapegoat. Either way, me and my men ended up with him. And it came to us to give him the full punishment for breaking the law. It ain't pretty, but it's not meant to be. We whipped his back till it was torn to shreds. We beat him until his own mother wouldn't recognise him. And this was before nails were pounded into his hands and feet and he was stuck on a cross. But here's the strange thing. This guy was the most gentle criminal I've ever dealt with. I don't mean weak. We get plenty of pathetic perpetrators sampling the delights of our judicial system. I mean, he was non-resistant. Nearly everyone else fights against us, resists the punishment we mete out to them. But this guy, he accepted it like he deserved it or something. Like he wanted to take our beating. That doesn't make it easy. To beat a man when he has hate in his eyes is easy. But when I hit this guy, he just looked at me like, like he was my friend. Like he was my brother. I can't really explain it. It wasn't like he was enjoying it. We treated him to the full Roman torture. But every time I caught his eye, it did me in. I even spat in his face to get a reaction, but he still looked at me with a tenderness that I, I couldn't really handle, so I'd hit him again. But when we lifted him up on that cross, after we had nailed him up there, naked and bloodied, after everything we'd done to him, I heard him say, Father, forgive them. He said, Father, he was talking to God, and he said, forgive them. After all we'd done to him, he asked God to forgive us. Not to smite us or strike us with lightning, he asked God to forgive us. And he called him Father. This man was extraordinary. Surely he was the Son of God. Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering. Yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. We all like sheep have gone astray. Each of us has turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Yet it was the Lord's will to crush him and cause him to suffer. And though the Lord makes his life an offering for sin, he will see his offspring and prolong his days. 
After he has suffered, he will see the light of life and be satisfied. By his knowledge, my righteous servant will justify many, and he will bear their iniquities. Therefore I will give him a portion among the great, and he will divide the spoils with the strong. Because he poured out his life unto death, and was numbered with the transgressors. For he bore the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. 